today about uh, stormophilia and the damage being caused in the Republic of Ireland. And indeed, we've been talking, of course, about the measures that have been uh, taken in other parts of the UK. We were looking at Northern Ireland, we were looking at uh, the west coast of Cumbria, we were looking at West Wales too. Um, but we're doing that on the day that we're also marking the 30th anniversary of the great storm of 1987, when that huge storm came in. Um, not predicted, it must be said at the time, by uh, uh, the weather experts, and there's been lots of debate about that, and it caused extensive damage, and there's a little sense of it for you. So with that in mind, let's have this report by our correspondent, Robert Hall. Howling in from the channel, the most devastating storm since 1703. It caught the southern half of the UK totally by surprise. Gusts of up to 115 miles an hour ripped 15 million trees from the wet ground, tore off roofs and cut power to thousands of homes. 18 people were killed and the damage ran to over a billion pounds. In London, so power cool. cuts forced the breakfast oh, news team into an emergency studio. Um, we must apologise for this uh, rather makeshift uh, breakfast time service which we're bringing you. Our Lime Grove Studios, uh, the home of breakfast time, is out of action this morning as a result of the bad weather. Part of the reason that so many were caught on the hop could be found in a now infamous forecast the previous day. Earlier on today, apparently, a woman rang the BBC and said she heard that there was a hurricane on the way. Well, if you're watching, don't worry, there isn't. Pictures shot in the hours after the storm offered a glimpse of the most dramatic damage. Broadcasters and local papers chartered planes to capture a changed landscape. I think the most amazing sight for us was the sight of the six of the seven oak trees on the cricket ground, after which the town was named, lying on their side. Across the southern counties, emergency services struggled to reopen roads and make structures safe. On the coast, an operation was launched to refloat a grounded ferry. The most lasting effect was the devastation of ancient woodland. Emmett's garden near Sevenoaks lost 95% of its trees to the gale. Some of those were more than 300 years old. In the decades which followed, many woods were replanted, but in some cases the land was left untouched and nature provided its own first aid. New clearings encouraged new plant growth and new wildlife species. Today, perfection has returned, proving that green shoots can and will find a way through destruction. Robert Hall, BBC News, Kent. Kent, of course, very affected 30 years ago. And, of course, uh, we'll be talking about today's storm as well. Let's join our presenter, Sarah Keith Lucas, who's there for us. Sarah? Hi there, Hugh. Well, Emmett's Garden here in Kent, we're at one of the highest points and this was one of the worst affected areas by that storm 30 years ago. In fact, 95% of the surrounding ancient woodland here was toppled over during that night back in 1987. And we can talk now to Tom Hill. And Tom, you're a trees and woodland management expert here in the South East for the National Trust. So can you tell us a bit about the clean up effort? I mean, how long it took after the storm or is it still going on today? Well, the initial uh, clean-up certainly took a couple of years and it was done with a lot of machinery and a one-size-fits-all approach. Um, since, since those early years, uh, since the storm, we have realised that um, natural processes play a big part in restoring the woodlands to their full beauty and health. And so letting nature do its thing has become far more important in the way that we're looking forwards now. Yeah, so looking ahead to the future, I think um, we can say that we've learnt lessons from the storm and probably changed the way we sort of manage woodlands and our natural environment uh, in the future. Absolutely, and I think there's a greater appreciation for, for trees and what they bring to our lives generally. And hopefully moving forwards now, everyone can uh, join us in helping to care for these special places. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us, Tom. And actually today, 30 years on from that great storm, it is another day of wild weather, severe weather, particularly across western parts of the British Isles and particularly for the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland too. But we've also had some bizarre colours in the sky out there. There's been a reddish brown kind of hue to the sky reported across many parts of the country. You can see the pictures here of that bizarre scene. We've had the sun reported red across many areas and that's all down to the fact that we've got this warm tropical air that's been drawn in as a byproduct of ex-hurricane Ophelia. 
It's got mixed in with that tropical air, a lot of Saharan dust and also some smoke from the wildfires that have been raging across parts of Portugal and Spain too, leading to that bizarre colours, quite an eerie sense and we've seen that down here in Kent in fact earlier. The skies went really dark and ready orange as well. It's now returned to a little bit more of a normal sort of colour but certainly the winds have been picking up. So. The satellite image of Hurricane Ophelia out in the Atlantic, it was a category three storm. It's been weakening a little bit as it's pushed its way northwards and eastwards towards the British Isles. But we've also got very strong gusts still. We've seen gusts of 96 miles per hour across southwestern parts of the Republic of Ireland. And as that storm moves its way across Northern Ireland through this evening, we're seeing those gusts as high as 80 miles per hour, certainly enough to cause severe disruption. It's not just Northern Ireland bearing the brunt of this storm. Also very strong winds across parts of uh, Western Scotland and also through North Wales and North West England too. So through the course of tonight, we're likely to see further disruption to travel down to the fact that we've got those severe gales. So keep an eye on local radio and also the severe weather warnings. Now, during Tuesday, the strongest of the winds in the north will gradually start to ease away, particularly across England and Wales. We'll have a less windy day, but for Scotland and Northern Ireland, the strongest winds pushing away during the afternoon and temperatures a little bit cooler than recent days between around about 13 to 17 Celsius. And it does look like those quieter weather conditions will continue into the middle part of the week. So the weather eventually are going to be calming down over the next few days, but we're not out of the woods just yet. Some severe weather, strong winds down to storm Ophelia, particularly towards the north and the west.